In this presentation, we shall go through about 40 questions, uh, true or false, and MCQ questions on the anatomy and physiology of the larynx for junior trainees and undergraduates. This is the second of two presentations on the anatomy and physiology of the larynx. The first presentation had about 80 evidence-based bullets, and this presentation would have around 42 questions, either false, true questions, or MCQ questions on the same subject. This is a true or false type of a question on the airway valve function of the larynx. Please stop the video now to go through the four points, mark them as either true or false, and then proceed to the next slide where you will find the answers. We would now go through the uh, four points of the larynx as an airway valve. The first point is the voice production is the primary function of the larynx. That's false. The primary function of the larynx is airway protection from aspiration. The vocal folds are adducted during thoracic fixation. That's true. It adducts to close up the, glot the glottis and increase the intrathoracic pressure to help with the uh, thoracic fixation. Number three, voice is produced by adjusting the expiratory airflow. That's true. Number four, the inlet valve function of the larynx prevents aspiration. That's also true. It's an MCQ question where you pick only one most appropriate answer. Please go through the four points to see uh, which is the most appropriate of the four possible answers. Laryngeal elevators in the neck, all of the below muscles are elevators, except, please uh, stop the video now, choose the right answer, and then proceed to the next slide where you would find the answer. On this MCQ question, you will be choosing only one most appropriate answer on laryngeal elevators in the neck. All of the below muscles are elevators except one. Laryngeal elevators would have origin in the skull base or the mandible and will be attached to either the hyoid or the thyroid and pulls up the larynx during, for example, swallowing. Whereas uh, laryngeal depressors would have their origin in, for example, the sternum and inserted in the thyroid or the hyoid, and when it contracts, it depresses the larynx in the neck. Digastric muscle is an elevator, so that's not true. Stylohyoid muscle is also an elevator. All these originate from the skull base and are inserted into the hyoid bone. Myelohyoid originates from the mandible and is inserted into the hyoid so the, these three muscles elevate the larynx. Sternothyroid muscle depresses the larynx so that's the correct answer. This is a true or false type of a question on laryngeal cartilages. Please stop the video now to go through the four points and choose which is true and which is false before proceeding to the next slide to find the answers. Laryngeal cartilages, true or false. The first point is cricoid cartilage articulates with the thyroid and the arytenoid cartilages. That's true. There is the cricothyroid joint and there is also the cricoarytenoid joint, so the cricoid articulates with these two other cartilages. It's true. The vocal folds are inserted in the cricoid cartilage. That's false. The vocal folds are inserted in the thyroid cartilage. Number three, cricoid cartilage is ring-shaped to maintain airway patency. That's true. It's a complete cartilaginous ring. The number four, the epiglottis is attached to the thyroid cartilage. 
that's true, the epiglottis is attached to the thyroid prominence, the inside of the thyroid prominence, just above the insertion of the vocal folds. Another true or false type of a question on laryngeal cartilages. Again, please stop the video to go through the four points, decide which is true and which is false before proceeding to the next slide where you would find the answers. Answers for this true or false type of a question on laryngeal cartilages. Number one, the vocal folds are attached to the arytenoid cartilages. That's true. Number two, the thyroid cartilage articulates with the hyoid bone. That's false. Number three, the thyroid cartilage is pulled inferiorly in the neck during deep inspiration. That's true. Such a position lower in the neck allows passage of more air during inspiration. Number four, cuneiform and corniculate cartilages strengthens the aryepiglottic fold. That's true. True or false question on laryngeal muscles. Please stop the video, go through the four points, decide which is true and which is false before proceeding to the next uh, slide. Answers for this true or false question on laryngeal muscles. Number one, the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle is the only abductor of the vocal folds. That's false. The lateral cricoarytenoid muscle is an adductor rather than an abductor of the vocal folds. Number two, the thyroarytenoid muscle is the only adductor of the vocal folds. That's again false. Two other muscle, muscles also uh, contribute to the adduction of the vocal folds, including the lateral cricoarytenoid and the interarytenoid muscle in addition to the thyroarytenoid muscle. Number three, the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle prevents aspiration during swallowing. That's false. The posterior cricoarytenoid muscle is the only vocal folds abductors. It opens up the larynx during a respiration, so it does not uh, adduct the vocal folds to prevent aspiration during swallowing. Number four, the interarytenoidus muscle adducts the posterior part of the vocal folds. That's true. This is an MCQ question. Uh, on the laryngeal muscles. All of the below laryngeal muscles are vocal folds adductors, except so you choose only one appropriate answer, which is not a vocal fold adductor. Please stop the video now, go through the four uh, possible choices, choose the appropriate one and proceed to the answers on the next slide. The only vocal fold abductor is the posterior cricoarytenoidus muscle. It's not a vocal fold adductor, so that's the correct choice. The other three muscles, the lateral cricoarytenoids, the thyroarytenoid muscle, and the interarytenoid muscles are all vocal folds adductors. A true or false type of a question on laryngeal nerve supply Please stop the video, go through the four points, decide which is true and which is false before proceeding to the next slide where you would find the answers. Answers for the true or false question on laryngeal nerve supply. Number one, the superior laryngeal nerve provides sensory nerve supply of the vocal folds. That's false. The superior laryngeal nerve provides sensory nerve supply to the supraglottic area not including the vocal folds. Number two, the recurrent laryngeal nerve provides motor innervation to the thyroarytenoid muscle. That's true. The recurrent laryngeal nerve provides motor innervation to all the internal laryngeal muscles with the exception of the cricothyroid muscle, which is an external laryngeal muscle. Number three, the cricothyroid muscle is innervated by the superior laryngeal nerve. That's true. The recurrent laryngeal nerve does not supply the cricothyroid muscle. This is the only muscle supplied by the superior laryngeal nerve, the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. 
Number four, the recurrent laryngeal nerve provides sensory innervation to the epiglottis. That's false. The recurrent laryngeal nerve provides sensory innervation to the glottis and the subglottis, but not the supraglottis, which is innervated by the superior sensory supply of the superior laryngeal nerve through its internal branch. This is a quick reminder of the laryngeal nerve supply, the two nerves that supplies the larynx. The recurrent laryngeal nerve is the motor innervation to all the muscles except the cricothyroid and gives sensation to the vocal folds and below in the subglottic area. The second nerve is the superior laryngeal nerve, which has two branches, an external branch that supplies the cricothyroid muscle and an internal branch, which is sensory rather than motor and provides sensation to the supraglottic area above the level of the vocal core. Fold. A true or false type of a question on the articulations and joints of the laryngeal cartilages. Again, please stop the video, go through the four points, decide which is true and which is false before proceeding to the next slide with the answers in it. Answers for the true or false question on the articulations and joints of the laryngeal cartilages. Number one, the cricothyroid joint is moved during vocal folds lengthening. That's true. The cricothyroid joint is moved by the cricothyroid muscle, which uh, stretches the vocal folds, increasing its length and its tension. Number two, the cricothyroid joint is moved by the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle. That's false. Number three, the cricoarytenoid joint are fixed during vocal folds abduction. That's false. The cricoarytenoid joints move during vocal folds abduction and adduction. Number four, the cricoarytenoid joint controls the position of the larynx in the neck. That's false. The cricoarytenoid joint controls the position of the vocal folds during adduction and abduction inside the larynx, but not its position in the neck. A quick reminder of the two laryngeal joints, the cricothyroid joint, which is a hinge joint. It's uh, moved by the activation of the cricothyroid muscle that pulls the cricoid upwards and displaces it a little bit posteriorly in relation to the thyroid cartilage. On doing this, it displaces the, the arytenoid cartilages which sits on top of the cricoid cartilage and this um, displacement posteriorly and slightly uh, upwards would stretch the vocal folds and on doing this it also increases its tension. The second joint is the cricoarytenoid joint which is a rocking type of movement. It opens up the glottis or closes it by abduction and adduction. The movement is principally through the muscle action on the muscular process of the arytenoids, moving the muscular process backwards, posteriorly by the posterior cricoarytenoid, which displays the vocal process laterally and opens up the vocal folds, uh, i.e. abducts the vocal folds. The reverse would happen when the muscular process of the arytenoids are pulled anteriorly, this would displace the vocal process of the arytenoid medially and closes up the uh, glottis. It adducts the vocal folds. A true or false type of a question on the laryngeal blood supply and lymphatics. Please stop the video, go through the four points, decide which is true and which is false and proceed to the next slide where you find the answers. Answers for the true or false question on laryngeal blood supply and lymphatics. Number one, the superior laryngeal vessel supplies the vocal folds. That's false. The superior laryngeal 
vessels supply the supraglottis, not the glottis or the subglottis. Number two, the supraglottis has limited lymphatics, that's false. The supraglottis has rich lymphatics, and tumors in the supraglottis would send metastasis early into lymph nodes in the neck. Number three, the subglottis lymphatics drain primarily into the upper deep cervical lymph nodes, that's false. The subglottic area, which is rich in lymphatics, drain primarily into the lower, not the upper, deep cervical lymph nodes. Number four, the inferior laryngeal vessels originates from the inferior thyroid vessels. That's true. Inferior laryngeal vessels originates from the inferior thyroid vessels, and superior laryngeal vessels originates from the superior thyroid vessels. This is a true or false type of a question on the laryngeal airway function to protect from aspiration. Please stop the video, go through the four uh, points, decide which is true and which is false before proceeding to the next slide where you find the answers. Answers for the true or false question on the laryngeal airway function to protect from aspiration. Number one, the vocal folds are abducted during swallowing, that's false. The vocal folds are adducted during swallowing to prevent aspiration. Number two, the supraglottic sensory nerves during swallowing triggers the vocal folds adduction. That's true. Number three, the larynx is elevated during swallowing. That's true. Number four, aspirated bolus triggers cough reflex on passing the vocal folds. That's also true. True or false type of a question on the laryngeal voice production. Please stop the video and go through the four points. Decide which is true and which is false before proceeding to the next slide where you'll find the answers. Answers for the true or false question on laryngeal voice production. Number one, the vocal folds are adducted during voice production. That's true. The larynx converts aerodynamic energy into acoustic energy. That's true. Number three, the vocal folds vibrations rate determines the voice fundamental frequency. That's true. Number four, the voice produced by vocal folds vibrations resonates mainly in the nasal cavity. That's false. Most of the uh, resonation of the uh, vocal folds vibration signal would occur in the pharynx and the oral cavity and the mouth. As a quick reminder on the mechanism of voice production by the larynx through the adducted vocal folds. During voice production, the vocal folds would be adducted. They would close up the larynx and meet in the midline, but there would be some vibrations of the vocal folds, some oscillation of the vocal folds. When they open up a little bit, while still in the adducted position, when they open up a little bit and then closes again rapidly and cycles would be repeated at a high rate, hundreds of uh, cycles per second. This mechanism of this uh, cyclic oscillation or vibrations of the vocal fold is that when the vocal folds are closed up, the air from the lungs in the subglottic space would not find a way to escape. The pressure is going to increase in the subglottic area until it reaches a critical level. This will push apart the vocal folds and a small amount of air, a puff of air, would escape through the glottis into the pharynx. Once this happened, the vocal folds would uh, re-adduct again because the pressure has now dropped and the elastic properties of the vocal folds would close up the glottis once more. Another cycle is then going to start with increased pressure in the subglottic area, pushing apart the vocal folds, escape of a puff of air, and then a drop of the pressure. The vocal folds will close up again and another cycle. The rate of these vibrations determines the fundamental frequency of the voice signal produced by the vocal folds. The puffs of air that are passing through the glottis would uh, resonate these, the, voc the voice signal 
would resonate in the uh, structures above the vocal folds, including the pharynx, the oropharynx, the oral cavity, and occasionally the nose, and this resonation would provide the speech that we uh, can hear. A true or false type of a question on the adjustable elasticity of the vocal folds five layers. Uh, please stop the video now, go through the four points, decide which is true and which is false before proceeding to the next slide where you would find the answers. Answers for the true or false question on the adjustable elasticity of the vocal fold layers. Number one, all the five vocal fold layers have identical elasticity that's false. Each of the layers has a separate elasticity from the others. Number two, the lamina propria of the vocal folds lies deep to the thyroarytenoid muscle. That's false. The thyroarytenoid muscle is the deepest of the five layers of the vocal folds. Number three, the cricothyroid muscle can change the vocal folds elasticity. That's true. The cricothyroid muscle can stretches the vocal folds, increases its length, and also increases its um, tension and can change its elasticity. Number four, the vocal folds are covered by squamous epithelium. That's true. The first layer of the five layers of the vocal folds is formed of squamous epithelium. And finally, a quick reminder of the adjustable elasticity of the vocal folds five layers. The five layers of the vocal folds are formed from superficial to deep by number one, a squamous epithelial cover of the vocal folds. Just below that is an area of rhinex space containing very loose connective tissue and fluid. The third and the fourth layers are parts of the lamina propria, the vocal ligament, and they have elastic properties and also some collagen tissue. The fifth layer is formed by a muscle, the thyroarytenoid muscle. This is the deepest layer of the vocal folds. These five layers has different elastic properties, and this allows uh, the, diff the various elastic properties of the five layers a smooth a movement of the vocal folds cover during vocal fold vibration and voice production. By this, we come to the end of this presentation on the questions and the answers of uh, false and true and MCQ questions on laryngeal anatomy and physiology for junior trainees and undergraduates. Assalamu alaikum.